NPM, Yarn, PNPM. All of these three package managers have one thing in common, or actually they have a lot of things in common. You can install packages pretty much with the same command, publish packages, generate log files and much more. So what is the difference and which one should you choose for your next project? Well, let's find out. This video is based on Sebastian Weber's article on LogRocket, which means if you're interested in this kind of content, please make sure to check his profile out, link in the description. The very first package manager ever released was NPM back in 2010, and it established the core principles of how package managers work nowadays. But if NPM has been around for over 10 years and does the job pretty well, then why do we even have alternatives? Well, here are some of the main reasons. Every package manager organizes dependencies using different algorithms. For example, nested versus flat, node modules versus plug and play mode. Different log file formats, each of which have performance implications. Different approaches to storing packages on the disk, which has implications for space efficiency. Also, different support for monorepos. And last but not least, different degrees of flexibility. So, who wins in each category? Well, first of all, let's define who our contestants are. NPM is the pioneer of package managers. Mistakenly, many people believe that NPM stands for Node Package Manager, but that's not really the case. At least now, although it used to be in the very beginning. Anyway, its release kind of created a revolution because before that, we didn't have any package JSON, we didn't have any node modules, so we would usually download our dependencies manually, include it in the HTML or simply use a CDN link or CDN URL in the HTML file. In 2016, Facebook and Google announced that they want to build a new package manager which would address the main issues of NPM such as consistency, security and performance. They named it YARN, which stands for Yet Another Resource Negotiator. Yeah, very smart. Although they based YARN's concepts and processes on NPM, YARN ran operations in parallel in order to speed up the installation process, which has been a major pain point for early versions of NPM. All in all, YARN set the bar higher and invented a couple of new concepts. Native monorepo support, cache-aware installs, offline caching, and most of all, log files. Yarn version 1 entered the maintenance mode in 2020. Since then, the version 1 has been considered legacy and was renamed to Yarn Classic. Its successor, Yarn version 2, aka Yarn Berry, is now the cool kid on the block, and it's considered the default for Yarn. PNPM was released in 2017 and it's built directly on top of NPM, which means you can start using it right away. The main problem creators of PNPM had with NPM and Yarn was the redundant storage of dependencies on the disk. Even though Yarn Classic had speed advantages over NPM, its dependency resolution was a no-go for PNPM creators. So for that, PNPM introduced an alternative way. Their method results in a nested node modules folder that stores packages in a global store on your home folder and every version of a dependency is physically stored in that folder only once, having a single source of truth and saving quite a bit of disk space. But we're not done with our contestants yet. Let's go back to Yarnberry. Yarnberry was released in 2020 and was a major upgrade from the original Yarn. The Yarn team began referring to it as Yarnberry to make it more obvious that it was essentially a new package manager. The main innovation of Yarnberry is its plug-and-play approach, which came about as a strategy to fix node modules. So instead of generating node modules, a .pnp.cgs file with dependency lookup tables is generated, which can be processed more efficiently because it's a single file instead of a nested folder structure. Every package is stored as a zip file inside of the .yarn slash cache folder, which takes up less space than the node modules folder because, well, it's a zip file. But all of that led to a big controversy. Plug and Play had breaking changes and required package maintainers to update their existing packages. Then, to address this incompatibility of PNP, the team has offered ways to easily change the default operation mode. With the help of the node modules plugin, you can simply switch to the old way of dependency resolution with node modules. Okay, now let's dive deep into real examples and test each category separately. 
So to install npm you don't really need to do much because it already comes together with node. So as soon as you install node on your machine you're gonna have npm out of the box and that's why it's the most widespread package manager. When it comes to installing yarn globally it's as simple as running sudo npm i-g yarn and it's gonna prompt you your password because it's a global command and yarn is installed. Similarly for pnpm it's not much effort either. sudo npm install minus g pnpm and you're ready to go. Now let's talk about yarn berry. To enable it you simply write yarn set version berry and it's gonna switch to it under the hood. So we're gonna retrieve some packages, seems like it's done and we have some files in the folder. And to switch back to the classical yarn, you can simply write yarn set version classic and that's it. So we're gonna be installing packages now with npm. So let's write npm install react minus minus save and we should have react installed. Anyways, as we can see, we have a package JSON and package log generated with react inside. To install react with yarn, the process is pretty much similar. Yarn add minus minus save or actually react minus minus save and you're gonna have React installed. As simple as that. Now that we have React, how about we installed it with yarn berry? So we're gonna write yarn set version berry to switch the versions. And now that we have switched, we're gonna try installing it. So I'm gonna write yarn install because we already have React in our packet.json. Let's see what happens. Okay, seems like we generated new .yarn folder, which has a cache and some interesting stuff we're gonna look into in a bit. With pnp it's gonna be more straightforward, so pnp install react minus minus save just like in npm because it indeed depends on it. Okay we have some output and we have pnp minus lock yaml, we're gonna look into this one soon and we also have a package.json, very standard. Alright how does the lock file look with pnpm? Okay as you can see it stored all the packages in a virtual store, okay that sounds interesting and apparently my node modules from pnpm got installed in the root folder, I'm sorry for that, and not inside the pnpm example folder. But anyway, as you can see that we have integrity checksums, which is something new I would say, and inside yarn, what is different inside this .yarn folder is that we have a cache, okay, what's inside the cache though? Okay, we also have this .gz file and inside the cache we have JS tokens. Okay, and we also have this react npm .zip. It's the same zip file that I mentioned before that has uh, that's that works as a single source of truth so that you don't have to install the same package many times. And it saves a lot of space because it's a zip file. Workspaces work slightly different but almost the same. So let's take a look at npm. We're gonna create .npmrc which is a config file for npm and we're gonna paste this code with workspaces which is hooks and utils and imagine we have these two workspaces. In yarn I would say it would, would look pretty much the same although this yarn version that we are currently now on is yarn berry so it's RC file looks a bit different as well and it's a YAML file. With pnpm it would look something like this. So .pnpm minus workspaces or workspace.yaml and we're gonna paste this code in so we're gonna define packages and with a directory for those packages. And that's how we lay out the beginning for our monorepo structures. Security features. npm has been more forgiving when it comes to bad packages and has caused some security vulnerabilities that directly affected many projects. Both Yarn Classic and Yarnberry verify the integrity of each package with checksums stored in yarn.log since the very beginning. By doing that, Yarn tries to prevent you from retrieving malicious packages that are not declared in your package JSON during installation. If a mismatch is found, the installation is aborted. PNPM also uses checksums to verify the integrity of each installed package. Sebastian analyzed many big open source projects to see the adoption of these package managers. And by looking at this table, you can probably say that it's very diverse. Some of them are using npm, React, Angular and Next.js are using Yarn. Yarnberry is used by some smaller packages like Jest and Babel and Redux Toolkit and Vue.js is using pnpm. Well, that's very interesting. When it comes to the main CLI commands, all of these three package managers 
share most of them. So as I said in the very beginning, you're not gonna really notice the changes when you switch from one package manager to another because most of the changes are again under the hood. One more important topic still needs to be mentioned though and it is NPX. What is NPX and how is it different from NPM? NPM is a package manager used to install, delete, update JavaScript packages on your machine. NPM on the other hand is a package executor and it used to execute JavaScript packages directly without installing them. So for example, if you want to use create react app to scaffold out your project and you don't want to install create react app globally, you can simply execute it directly with NPX. Well, if you're a React developer, I'm pretty sure you've done this a million times already. So here's the conclusion. If you're using a package manager and it works well for you, don't really bother switching and just keep using it. And yeah, all of them have their advantages and disadvantages. And I really feel like the community is trying to close this gap between them. NPM is the OG. Yarn is at the same time kind of a legacy. On the other hand, it's very progressive. PNPM is just good. So make sure you know pros and cons of each package manager when you're trying to apply it to a specific project and you're gonna be good to go. But if you wanna learn more about next generation JavaScript build tools, make sure to check this video out. I think it's gonna be really interesting as well.